Good morning, everyone. On this Wednesday, April the 3rd, I'm Chris Allen here on the Sam channel, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X all sponsored by ACE hardware marketplace. As you can see, I've got a different background today. None of the red, none of the severe weather it's all gone. But as you note up here, um, right on the right hand side today, April 3rd is the 50th anniversary of the super outbreak of tornadoes in 1974. I remember it. I remember being probably the most terrified that I've ever been in my life. I was scared of storms as a kid. I was about 11, 11 and a half going on 12, uh, at the time in 1974. Um, we pretty much stayed in my grandparents' basement. They happened to live next door to us, and they had a big house with a big basement. It was normally just there for storage. Uh, my grandmother canned a lot of vegetables and things from the garden, and us kids would go down there sometimes in the basement and play, hide and seek, you know. But for an, about an 18-hour period, uh, the afternoon and evening of April 3rd into the morning of April 4th, uh, we stayed there. It was terrifying. We didn't get directly hit from the tornadoes, but they came very close. And I can just remember the noise and the lights flickering. And uh, it was just, you know, and you wake up the next day and you travel to the next town or just a little bit down the road and you see all the destruction. 148 tornadoes in that 24 hour period. It was a record breaking outbreak. That's why it's called the super outbreak of 74. Uh, it is, uh, on my mind because it was a game changer for me. It actually was that opportunity or the opportunity of being so scared that I became fascinated with weather and how bad the weather can get up until that point. I was so scared of it that even the smallest little shower thunderstorm terrified me, but that night and then seeing the destruction the next day, something compelled me to want to learn more. And so from that fear, came fascination and I wanted to discover why the weather does what it does. And here I am. If it had not been for that super outbreak 50 years ago on this day in 1974, I probably wouldn't be doing the weather. <laughs> it's just, I see that as a, as a God thing. I do. It was just meant to be. Like I said, 148 tornadoes in a 24-hour period, 30, think about this, 30 F4 and F5 rated tornadoes. Back then in 74, they were rated just with the word F, which stood for Fujita. The Fujita scale, Ted or the Theodore Fujita was the scientist who came up with the rating scale. Uh, now they're EF, they've been uh, adjusted with the E, which means enhanced Fujita scale. So that's why we call them EF1, EF2. Back then it was just the F. Still, one of the most terrifying days that I will ever remember. Over 6,000 were injured from those tornadoes that day, the super outbreak. 319 people died. April 3rd, 1974, 50 years ago today. Some of those fatalities were nearby. Alberton, you go up to near Greensburg, that area, up toward Litchfield. Louisville got one of the worst tornadoes, but the highest number of fatalities and the worst damage was from an F5 that hit Brandenburg, Kentucky. 
an F5. In fact, let me show you. Let me show you this uh, map. Uh, okay, where did I put it? I'm sorry. It just, all of that throws me out. Okay, let's get to the here and now, and I'll show you the map. Uh, there's a look at the Plano cam after some morning clouds and even a brief shower. Things are clearing out, but don't expect this to be this way all day. We're going to get these little occasional showers that pop up in the upper wave that is still spinning about. And so from time to time, you'll see a little sun like that. Then it clouds over and we get a shower. It's going to be breezy and it's much cooler this morning. Here is the look from downtown. Uh, AAA Systems live cam. And you can see there's a rain shaft right there in the middle, just left of the tower. Uh, yeah, you're going to see these little showers that pop up all day today. Uh, we call them diurnal showers. It's almost like in the wintertime when you... The sun comes out, then you have a burst of snow. Then the sun comes out and you have, in this case, it's going to be rain because it's not that cold. But some of you, even tonight, could get chilly enough for a little snow shower mixing in with the rain in some parts of the area, not everywhere, okay? Um, I'll talk about that more in a second. Let me show you that. I'm sorry, I got this out of order. I was wanting to do something a little different for the anniversary. Uh, and I am planning to do something tonight on News 40, um, a story commemorating the 50, 50th anniversary. But here are all the tornadoes that, that came. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that amazing? For those of you that don't know, it started on the day of April 3rd but went into the morning of April 4th. There were even a few tornadoes, it doesn't show it here, that went into southern Canada the next day. But all of these lines depict tornadoes, 148 individual tornadoes. The one all the way down south was in Mississippi. So you went from the Gulf Coast all the way into Canada that day. So here are the ratings. Here is, you see Warren County right there. You see Simpson County. It's a tornado that started um, just east of Franklin and went right up through Alberton. And you see that blue line? Well, that was a EF3, well, an F3 at the time, as I mentioned. An F3, 35, uh, there were 35 of those. EF3, um, 35 reports, but actually 33 that turned out to be uh, EF or F3. Now, this is 147, but it's actually 148. But you see from Nashville, now the yellow indicates the fatalities. Zero to five, Warren County and Simpson County. Zero to five, there were actually four. Now, you look at the red counties, that is Meade County, um, Brandenburg, he at that red line, F5. There were only seven of those that day. But there you go. And it, it wiped out the town of Brandenburg. Then you go up. Here's one. There's one past Louisville up toward Cincinnati. Uh, DuPont, Indiana is where some of these are, one of those are located. And then this is Xenia, Ohio, where it just decimated an F5 decimated the city of Xenia, Ohio. Uh, they were conducting a play at the school, Xenia High School that day. And somebody said, Hey, you want to see what a tornado looks like? Come here and look. And they were looking out the window of the school. This was after hours. And their play director said, everybody get to your shelter. Everybody get, if he had not done that, after the tornado hit, it decimated the school. But the stage in the auditorium where they were conducting this play practice after school hours had three school buses 
that landed right on that stage. I mean, there are stories after stories of just incredible things that happened. Unfortunately, still 319 people died. But you got to remember, they didn't have this. They didn't have radar. Well, there was radar. It was at uh, the airports. But it was meant for airplanes, not weather. Now we have this. Now we have this. And now we have this. We have, I mean, there were a few crude, very crude outdoor warning sirens that did sound the alarm, but they weren't, they weren't tornado sirens. They were sirens that were put up in case of a nuclear attack. This is how it was 50 years ago. I just want you to picture how crude it was back then. So we didn't, you know, people were yearning for warnings, yearning to know what's going on. Sometimes they didn't see it coming or had any warning whatsoever because we didn't have the technology. Um, I get a little emotional when I, when I reflect on this day because I think about all those people and I think about how close I came. Um, to being one of those 319. It wasn't that close, but it was close enough. Um, And I'm just, I feel like we're so blessed now to have all of this technology. And yet there are people that get off my TV. I don't care about your app. You talk too much. I don't care about just, if something hits me, it's going to hit me. I don't care. And it's just so much has changed in 50 years. You would think people would be so appreciative of all this. I mean, not just me, but everything that the weather service, all the media outlets, the weather networks, media in general, people would be more appreciative of having the tools that we have now to warn you. I mean, I know. 90% 90% or so, a little bit higher than that, probably do. But it just, sometimes I'm like, <laughs> can you not understand what we're trying to do here? Like yesterday, boy, that happened quickly. And uh, I just thought about that, the Ron Burgundy thing in Anchorman. You know, boy, that escalated quickly. Just when we thought it was over, it wasn't over. And uh, thank goodness it didn't turn out to be as bad as it could have been. But there were reports of tornado or at least tornado sightings, Woodburn, Alberton, uh, but no damage, no touchdown. There's the leftovers of the rain and thunderstorms now east of us. That's where the focus of rough weather is going to be today, far to the east. What we're seeing now is leftover upper-level energy rotating around a low-pressure system that's over northern Illinois, and it's shoving this activity, this light rain showers, through Kentucky today. There you see it. Look at that. This is the bad stuff, but this is just leftover cold air, deep cold air, low-pressure system that's going to throw out these little occasional showers that are going to swing through today, just like I showed you the uh, on the uh, uh, pictures or the uh, cameras outside. The uh, sun will come out for a little bit, like you're seeing on the satellite view here. Look at that. So, And then you get a bunch of clouds and a brief shower. Then the sun comes out. And then here comes another cluster of clouds. Then the sun comes out. And this thing is going to rotate, not just today, but tomorrow. Now, when I say rotate, and then I show you the sun coming out, then showers, is it going to be bad today? No. This is, this is not yesterday. This is not the setup from yesterday. This is much different, okay? You can see, look, you can see that thing spinning right there. Big low-pressure system, deep core cold, low pressure. That's just going to 
swing through and bring us those showers from time to time today. See, the sun is out now, and but it's going to go back in, and we're going to get more showers. That's That's a given, pretty much. It's going to do that today, and it's going to do it tonight and even tomorrow for part of the day. And then it's gone, finally. Let, let me show you temperatures. I promised I, I promised myself I wasn't going to go long today, but I just got into the 50th anniversary stuff, and, and here I am 15 minutes already in. I went 45 yesterday, but we had like over 3,000 viewers, the most I've ever had for this podcast. Thank you. So here are the temperatures right now as of 9, it's, it's right now, 9 a.m. As I do this, 44 in Bonaire, 45 up at the Corvette plant, almost 50, 48 down at the Mesonet sensor at the Ag Expo Center. Most everybody mid to upper 40s. Uh, let's look at wind. It's coming out of the west. Sustained wind, 10 to 15. And now the gusts. Look at that. 20 to 25 wouldn't surprise me to see a 30 mile per hour gust from the west and a bit northwest later today the atmosphere is very uh well it's more stable now look at these dew points 30s and 40s these dew point temperatures were in the 70s yesterday and that helped produce the severe weather and the amount of spin that was in the air with the high dew point, the high moisture content, is what got those funnels and those brief tornadoes uh, going yesterday. But all of that is, is gone now. We're just going to see a few showers today with that upper low spinning about over the Great Lakes. Let's check the model blender. 50s today, 55, 56, yeah. Closer to 50 tomorrow after getting down to 38 tonight. Now, some of you will look at those lows, 38, 36, 32. Yeah, there could be some frost in there. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking mostly Friday night into Saturday morning when it shows 32 right there. So, yes, some patchy frost is possible if you've put out plants or crops or anything for the spring season. It could be in jeopardy if you don't bring it in or cover it up. Then we look at the rebound. Quick rebound after a couple of chilly days, we go into the 60s and 70s all next week. So with that, is there going to be more storms? I would say probably. Are they going to be severe? Probably. It's April in Kentucky and you know the drill, or by now you should know the drill. This can happen any place, any time. It could be a lot worse, or it could be not as bad as what we had yesterday. I can't tell you that for sure. It is so, that's why it's so critical for you to be just prepared. All right, here's a look at the maps. I'm promising I'm not going to keep you much longer, but thanks for hanging in, staying with me. Look at this. Here's right now the clear spot. The model's picking up on the next wave. Here was a wave number one that came through. Here's another wave. And these are going to be just little, it's not going to have the coverage like it shows here. This is all painted in. It's just going to be a shower here, shower there, one here, one there, one here, one there. And it's going to rotate east. So that's why I say with this upper wave, there it is, spotty showers and perhaps even a rumble of thunder. There's not a lot of instability out there, but the sun itself will aid in what we call a lapse rate between the temperatures and the dew points above us and down to the ground. In other words, the difference between the two can, from the sun's energy and heat, spark a thunderstorm. But if it happens, it's not going to be anything like yesterday. And then here's tonight, 7 o'clock, more of those spinning, um, that spinning low-pressure system and wave that's going to produce those pop-up showers. 
And look at this. Tomorrow morning, maybe chilly enough to have a little mixy stuff in there. Radcliffe, E-Town, Louisville, Frankfurt, Lexington, maybe even down here. Southern Kentucky, especially over towards, say, Dale Hollow Lake, Lake Cumberland. Possibility. Look at that. Tomorrow. Ooh, there's Bowling Green. This is 7 a.m. in the morning. It wouldn't surprise me if somebody says, hey, Chris Allen, guess what? I see snowflakes. A flurry mixing in with the rain. Yeah, could happen. It's not going to stick. It's not going to cause any issues. Now, eastern Kentucky, eh, they may have an icy bridge or exit ramp or something like that tomorrow. But it's going to go away pretty quickly as temperatures warm above freezing. It all changes back to rain. And that feature begins to move away on Friday. Here's Saturday, high pressure overhead. Good looking Saturday. And then we go Sunday. Here comes the next system. Warm front is going to lift moisture, high pressure to the east, helping lift the moisture back into the area. A few showers, maybe a thunderstorm Monday in the morning. And then here comes the next system. Just kind of sitting back to the west, it starts to stall because of the high pressure east. This is Tuesday morning. And then by Wednesday, it's out of here. So that's your weather in a nutshell. Still took 20, <laughs> 21 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, thank you to everybody. Uh, Who's this itching? I got a pollen is just. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. Don't have time. I'll read all of your comments, but thank you, everybody. And thank you to everybody that watched yesterday, heeded the warnings, uh, prepared, always be prepared. Boy Scout said that years ago. Um, just be ready. This is the time of year when it can happen anytime. And, um, you know, thinking about all those that lived through the super outbreak 50 years ago today, back in 1974. What a day. All right. Uh, there, that noise. What? Oh, they're taking the trash out. That's what it was. <laughs> like, boom. What was that? One thunder. Sun's out. Okay. God bless you all. Thank you for watching and have a great day.